Before getting started, I would like to know if you or anyone you might know has an interest, <clears throat> excuse me, in knowing more about mortgage forbearance and credit consequences. If so, please join us for a Freddie Mac update on Tuesday, July 7th at 5 p.m. This webinar is open to all homeowners, so please share with anyone that might be in need of this information. To register, please go to nsdcar.com forward slash webinars. Also, please be sure to visit us on Facebook and share the information with family and friends. And now your presenters for today, David Halpern and Stephen Lopez. Appreciate it, Jennifer. Thank you. I really appreciate yeah. it much. And welcome everybody from your association and from the greater San Diego area. Uh, my name is David Halpern. It's actually kind of misspelled on there, so I'm just going to type it in the screen for you if anybody ever wants to reach out here. And um, appreciate having your time. I'm going to kind of get into a little bit of the difference between a salesperson and a business professional in a moment here. But what I wanted to share with you is my background is not real estate for mo at least most of my life until the last six, seven years. So um, I grew up in New York, went to, went to Yale University, worked for an investment bank that acquired a number of companies, including Crescent Jewelers, was with Crescent Jewelers for a 11 years becoming the chief operating officer, uh, running their stores, left there to become the CEO of a database marketing company in Torrance, California, moved down to SoCal, met my wife, all was good, ran that company for six years, got a real education on marketing. They didn't hire me because I was an expert on marketing. They hired me because I knew how to grow a company, but boy, did I get a marketing education, which I'll share with you a little bit of uh, this morning, if that's okay. And um, left there seven years ago at the ripe old age of 47 to start my own entrepreneurial endeavor. So I guess what I want to tell you is, you know, people now view me, I, we, we've gotten around a lot and our business has grown radically, specifically within the real estate industry in SoCal in the LA greater area. So, um, you know, right now I'm coaching about 135-ish one-on-one clients, realtors, lenders, mortgage title, et cetera, and even other industries, which is my background. Uh, but we also have products and things, and so we have like 800 people using products. So this thing has grown a lot in the last seven years. And I'm not saying this to impress you, but to impress upon you that if you consider the fact that I'm an, a service-based business professional like you are, then what I'm telling you is the way you and I grow a business is identical. It's the same process. So we're gonna go through a little bit of how did we take our business and grow it so radically. And I also wanna tell you on the flip side, you know, just because I'm now a business coach and you know, realtors and lenders know me kind of especially in the LA area as, uh, as kind of one guy that gets around or whatever, it doesn't mean that what I say is right, right? There is, I am a strong proponent of the fact there is no one size fits all. Be careful of coaches that try to fit you into their system. It's great for their marketing plans, but it's not great for you. There is no one size fits all and everybody must build their business in their own unique way. Now, also, I want to remind you that it took me till age 47 to start my own entrepreneurial endeavor. So now I run around like I'm the crusader for building a business and how do we get realtors from two transactions to 10 and 10 to 25 and 25 to 50 and all this kind of stuff for brokers and, and lenders. But it, why did it take me that long to get started in business? For the same reason, you know, I applaud a lot of my clients for starting earlier than me. Entrepreneurial fears, et cetera. It doesn't matter, kiddos, it doesn't matter if you go to Yale, it doesn't matter if you go work for an investment bank, there's still the same entrepreneurial fears that prevented me from doing the thing I really dreamed of, which was having my own you know, entrepreneurial endeavor. So what I wanna share with you is a little bit, I don't know how to teach other than through testimony. So I love sharing kind of how do we grow our business, our coaching business, and apply it directly to your business, if that makes sense. So let's start, let's get right into it. I don't wanna kind of, if I don't use your time and make it valuable, then this is worthless for your association. So let's get right into it. And I have basically an objective. In the next 40 minutes, I want you to get, I don't care if you've been in the business for 20 years, I want you to get something that you can use now that you feel inspired to use or that maybe shakes up the way you thought from before this call today, if that makes any sense. So let's go ahead and get started. And then again, I'll just put my name on the side. I know it just with the correct spelling. It's David Halpern, in case you're curious. Okay, here we go. When I started working for this database marketing company, the marketers taught me something interesting because they were doing on a weekly basis, 550,000 pieces of direct mail and 800,000 emails with a full inbound, outbound call center, pay-per-click, et cetera, et cetera. And now I get to the real estate industry and I'm looking at realtors and realtors are afraid to pick up the phone and call up someone who they did a transaction with freaking three years ago. I have never seen anything like it. So here's my theory, are you ready? The problem with real estate is no barriers to entry. 
anybody and their mom can become a realtor because it, please forgive me, but it's the truth. It doesn't take any money. And please, with all love and respect, the test ain't that hard. No disrespect, but the problem is, and, and everybody becomes a realtor. Why? Because if you have, happen to have two people that love you during the course of the year and they refer you deals, you've just made as much money on those two transactions as somebody that's working literally full-time, 40 hours a week for an entire year minimum wage. You get my drift? Okay? It is lucrative. I don't blame anybody for doing it part-time. But the problem is you have this giant universe of realtors, the majority of whom, you know, the average, the average realtor produces whatever the, I don't remember the statistic, three deals a year. It's something ridiculously low because they don't think like business people. They think like salespeople, scared salespeople, I might add. Okay. So we're going to do a little bit on the difference between sales professionals and business owners here. Are you ready? The sales professional says this, ready? Number one, sales professional says, you know, I have to do everything myself if I want it done right. Sales professional says, I'm not going to reinvest in my business. Why? Because I live paycheck to paycheck. I have money, fears, et cetera, which by the way, curses you to continue to live paycheck to paycheck. Sales professional says, nobody's going to do it as well as I can. Sales professional says, if I want to make more money, it's easy. I just got to work harder. Business owner says, my identity doesn't have to be intertwined with my entity. The business owner says, I've got this business and I want to grow it. And there's only one way to grow it through leverage, 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 right? That's why I like when Gary Keller talks in the millionaire's real estate agent and emphasizes leverage. Yes, this is how business owners think. So how does leverage apply to you as a realtor doing two deals a year or 20 deals a year or whatever you do, right? Very simple. Leverage is like a seesaw, right? You sit on one end, what happens? The other end shoots up. Here's my favorite definition of leverage. Small investment, great big return. Small investment of time, small investment of money, great big return in terms of transactions or income, et cetera. Does this make sense? Now, the three, I'm very biased, and you may not agree with me, and I'm okay with that. You may choose to disagree with me, but listen to me carefully. I'm going to tell you, in my opinion, having gotten around the business world for whatever number of years, my opinion about what are the greatest forms of leverage in business, and I don't care if you're a real estate professional, a lending professional, or even a business coach, for me, there is, a mark, there is a big gap between these. Number one, the highest return on investment is mentoring and coaching. And I know you can say, well, that's what do you do for a living? I know. But what you don't know is in 2013 and 14, both years, I spent for one-on-one -on -one coaching with a man named Keith Cunningham, $60,000 a year. Listen to me carefully. He travels with Tony Robbins, does his wealth mastery events. Uh, he's, Kiyosaki called him Rich Dad in his first edition of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. He said special thanks to Rich Dad, Keith Cunningham. Then they had a kind of a falling apart as a business uh, partners. So I coached privately one-on-one -on -one with this man for two years for six-figure cost. I don't know. I don't have clients that spend that much on this stuff, right? Anywhere near that or whatever. But here's what changed. Everything changed after that. My business has been robust the last five, six, seven years. My thinking has changed. So I'm typing something in in the notes. We're all here on this call to change our results, not incrementally, but radically. Incremental is a waste of time. To go from 10 to 12 deals, waste of time. Waste of time and money, right? We want to change our results, but not really incrementally, more radically. How do we do that? And the answer is this, ready? We first have to change, radically, our daily activities or habits. Because if you always do what you always did, you always get what you always got. If you look at yesterday, Thursday, June 25th of 2020, and your activities look mysteriously similar to your activities two years ago, you're screwed. You are not going to change your business. It's not going to grow. It has to be very different. Are you with me? So how do you make it very different? Isn't the magic question of mentoring, coaching, running a business, how do you get yourself to radically change your daily activities or habits? The problem is most people I know rely on willpower as their great strategy. Willpower. Next Monday, I'll start dieting. <laughs> How many times a year that one, right? Next Monday, I will start cold calling. <sighs> okay? Never works because it relies on the power of your will, and you are the problem. The reason your business hasn't broken through is you. Does this make sense? So the only way to radically change your daily activities or habits sustainably is through a radical change of thinking. Okay, thinking will, change, will lead to different daily, let, let me get practical here so I'm not too out in the clouds for you people. Ready? Your thinking has to change. Remember, the book is called Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill, 1937. Think and Grow Rich. It's not door knocking, Grow Rich. It's not. 
Incidentally, door knocking and cold calling. You know the coaches that pitch that stuff all the time. It's BS. You want to hear why it's BS? I'm not saying it doesn't lead to deals. I'm saying that the National Association of Realtors suggested that 65% of real estate transactions come from sphere and past clients. You want me to translate that in English to you? Database and social media, period. 65%. If you get outside of real estate, the number statistically nationally is only 41%. In your industry, it is heavily your networks that create deals. Why? Because it's a higher price point transaction. So the door knocking cold calling thing is wrong. It's Okay, let's go back to thinking, Grow Rich. We'll come back to database in a second. Think, how do we change your thinking? By who you hang out with. Jim Rohn got it right when he said, you are the sum of the five people that surround you the most. You are the sum of the five people that surround you the most. How do you change it? By changing who you hang out with. Or as Gary V would say, audit your inner circle. Audit your, I'm not saying get divorced. I'm saying audit your inner circle and maybe replace one or two of the people you spend a lot of time with. Who do you listen to? Tapes, books, CDs. The number one return on investment Number one ROI for me is who you hang out with, which could involve coaching, mentoring, accountability. Let's go to number two. This is important. And we're going to get to database, social. We're going to get to that topic of lion desk and, and all that kind of thing in a minute here, right? Number two, the second highest return on investment. Number one, coaching and mentoring. Because if your thinking doesn't change, you have no shot for changing your daily activities or habits. For example, when I tell my coaching clients, look, I worked with a company that did 800,000 emails a week and five, you know, 550,000 pieces of direct mail. We're not going to build a business based on having only 100 people in a database and being afraid to reach out to them once in a while. That is no business. Okay, second highest return on investment is people. You've got a lever. It's, this, it's, the, it's the next greatest return on investment is people. When I tell you, you must reinvest in your business, business owners reinvest, you're, everyone is thinking, I know, I know, I know, marketing. No, 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 marketing is powerful. It's the number three out of the big three is marketing. But it's only number three. Number one is we've got to change your thinking or your activities will never change radically. Number two is you've got to get help from others. One of the lessons I learned in business many years ago was whenever you feel overwhelmed or stressed, get help. And it's almost always in the form of people, sometimes in the form of technology. Could be a combination of the two. Does this make sense? Okay. Your third highest return on investment is marketing. Okay. It was, it was, this was marketing. Okay. Now, marketing. Let's talk about marketing. Quantity over quality is my motto all day of the week. Okay, quantity over quality. There's a great story from a book called, um, uh, I think it's called Love of Art. Anyway, the story is, it's a true story. A ceramic arts teacher took a class of kids and divided them up half and half and said, we're going to take half the class and grade you based on the quantity of ceramic pots you produced and the other half based on quality. Okay. Interestingly enough, during the test time, the quantity group churned out pot after pot after pot, improving their flaws in the process. The quality group, okay, took most of the test time to perfect the perfect pot and plant it. And then they, had, they rushed in order to execute. Listen to this. The quantity group, in the end, churned out not only a significantly greater quantity of ceramic pots, but also work of a far superior quality. Interesting? Listen to me carefully. I ran a marketing company as a CEO. Now I coach, you know, lots of realtors, lenders, all this kind of stuff. The one thing I try to get people to do is to step up their interactions with people, not incrementally, but ridiculously radically. Are you with me? Quantity will lead to quality. Most people are worried. Your problem is perfectionism. Please write this down if you're taking notes. Perfectionism is a disease. It's debilitating. It prevents you from your best and highest business. Perfectionism is debilitating. It prevents you. Why? Because everyone I know is like, I want to look good on social media. So they go spend 1000 or $1,500 a month on fancy social media products. And they get no transactions. And then they wonder, how come it didn't lead to stuff, right? Look, you're all concerned. I have people that send out messages through Facebook Messenger, Instagram, and of course, Lion Desk and CRMs, which we're going to talk about in a moment here, right? They send out lots of messages. And when somebody rejects or opts out, they freak out. Listen to me carefully. Please write this down. If nobody opted out of your database yesterday, you didn't open your doors for business. It is a completely different way of thinking than the way realtors do it. Does that make sense? Okay. It's a different way of thinking. But you have to think, the only way I'm going to get leads and transactions is also if I'm going to get people that opt out. Right? Some will, some won't. So what next is the way a business owners think. A salesperson says, I hate rejection. I can't stand it. I want to 
be perfect in my communication so nobody ever tells me no, which is not the way you build a great business, right? Please write this down. Are you ready? Two definitions of marketing that will help you understand how to build. And we go right into lie in desk details. Number one, number one, marketing is, okay, I'm going to type this into the chat box for you also. Marketing is broadcasting to far more people far more frequently. Trying to spell this correctly for you so it looks professional both who you are and what you do. Both who you are. Marketing is broadcasting. Broadcasting means casting a broad net, not a little narrow net, a broad net to far more people than you can imagine. The average realtor I know has between 100 and 150 people to put in a database or in their database. That's not going to get it done. You're not going to grow a business that you desire. The average realtor I know has 300 friends on Facebook. That's not going to get it done either. We've got to grow it. We've got to broadcast to far more people, far more frequently than you imagine, right? I am a fan of several times a month. I'm going to give you quantities in a minute that I recommend for my clients, clients privately. And look, not every, my clients all do it differently, okay, from each other. But I'm going to give you rough quantities. Both who you are and what you do. One of the problems, the paralysis of perfectionism is you're like, I don't want to share anything personally about me. You know, the old maxims never talk about politics and never talk about faith or whatever, right? So people are fearful of communicating. The problem is the world has changed. Today, we're, we live in this reality marketing world where the more you share about your business and yourself personally and professionally, the more business you, you get because your vibe determines your tribe. The more business you get. I share openly my backstory. I tell people the story as crazy as it sounds of how I grew up in a two bedroom, one bedroom, one, two bedroom, one bath apartment in Queens, New York, 900 square feet, sharing a bedroom with my sister. Dad worked as a security guy for the Whalen drugstore chain at 30 something K a year. Parents argued about money as a lot as a kid, even though we had a great family. Cars were stolen, got mugged a few times, not the safest neighborhood. Dad had a stroke. Doctor told him, you know, take time off. He went back to work because he needed money. Had a heart attack three months later in a coma passed away from that, you know, when he was 66. I tell the story about myself and my wife and how I was a disastrous husband for the first couple of years of our marriage. And it's shockingly miracle, a shocking miracle that we survived here. We are 18 years later. I tell transparently stories about myself all the time, included in coaching business. Why? Because that's what creates connections, right? Please write this down. Facts tell, but stories sell. Facts tell, but stories sell. If you're taking notes, write that down. If you're not taking notes, write that down. Facts tell, but stories sell. By the way, business owners think on paper. Salespeople don't capture any ideas. Whole another story. Bill Gates, in his mansion on an island outside of Seattle, 20 room mansion, has yellow pads and pens in every one of the rooms. He's notorious for this. Deathly afraid of not capturing ideas. Les Brown talks about that in his videos all the time. That everyone has three, four, five ideas a year that would have changed their life or their business, but they don't capture them. You won't remember it. If you're just listening to this Zoom call, you're not going to get anything out of it. You're going to forget it all if it's going to be gone an hour later. Capturing it on paper increases retention radically. Okay, let's go to, so why CRMs? Let's talk about database and social media. Database and social media. In my opinion as a coach, the way I teach it to people is your database, whether let's say it's Lion Desk, right? Or some of you will use some of the other ones out there. You know about all of them, right? A database, in my opinion... And forgive me, Stephen, for saying this, right? And I love Lion Desk. I actually use Lion Desk, by the way, for my own business, even though I'm a business coach. A CRM is nothing more than a box you put your data in. It is worthless unless you use it. Now, it's great that your association has this relationship with Lion Desk where you get it for free, but if you don't use it, what's the point, right? How about this? Facebook is another database. So if you got Lion Desk, that's one database, and you can message it through email and text. If you have Facebook, I mean, that's Lion Desk. If you have Facebook, it's another database, and you message it through Facebook Messenger, which is, think about it, no different from texting Lion Desk. Instagram's another database, and you can message them through direct messaging. Okay, so let's talk about why do people get a CRM? Why do people have, like, a Lion Desk, for example? Number one, it's to keep in touch with people. It's to keep in touch with people. I can show you crazy examples. In fact, I'll... I, if I pop this up quickly enough, I'll show it to you. If not, uh, let's see. Let's see if we got one here for you people. If I can't, eh, I won't find it quickly enough, so I'm going to probably skip it here. But literally, people that have been just literally getting transactions just by keeping in touch with people. 
Ah, here it is. Okay. This is a message that was sent out by text by one of my clients, Jeffrey Tolbert in Long Beach. And the message said this, okay? This went out through Lion Desk. Hi, it says, um, hi, Joe. Hope you, and, uh, hope you and yours are safe, healthy, and feeling positive. Don't, please don't hesitate to keep out uh, in touch with me uh, if you need anything. Best, Jeffrey. Okay, and the reply back, that was just a check in. It wasn't even asking for business or talking real estate. The reply back was, Mr. Tolbert, how are you, my friend? Hope your family's healthy. I see you're keeping the pool game sharp. We are good on my end. It's fortuitous that you reached out. My girl and I are looking to rent a two bedroom house in Long Beach. The goal is owning, but I don't think we're quite ready for that yet, blah, blah, blah. And of course, the next message is he put, he replied back, my man, who's the girl, my man, happy for you, champ, the family's well. I have left the house like four times in five weeks. Geez, all oh, work-related, blah, blah, blah. And here's the final punchline. Are you ready, people? Well, now we're in escrow, 660K. That was just from keeping in touch. The number one reason you should have a CRM is to keep in touch. Number two is to have an online address book. I know it's crazy, but you need that. We just got a lead last week on Instagram for coaching from a woman that I actually know out in, I think she's in Covina area, Michelle Miramontes. And she replied back to one of our messages on Instagram direct messaging saying, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in getting information about coaching. Well, she didn't reply back to the Instagram when we replied back to her, but because we had her in Lion Desk with her name, phone and email, right? We also sent her a text in the email and sure enough, she replied, got it? Okay, number two is having it as an address book. And number three is as a task tracker a task tracker, which most people that use a CRM never use the task tracking. Even the people I coach, and I don't even try to force them into it, but there are other great tools where you, now I tell people I like Lion Desk because it's cheap, texting, emailing, the end. Crazy as it sounds, that, that's what you need it for. Okay, let's move on, shall we? I wanna give you quantities. Quantities of touches that most of you will not only never agree with, but you'll never even consider doing. But for me, this is what I work on with all of my coaching clients. And I don't, it doesn't have to be exactly like this. And you can skip pieces. I don't care. I just, you know, the big punchline in this is do more. Are you ready? There are six tactics of database marketing. And this applies to social media as well. Six tactics of database marketing. Are you ready? Number one, texting. Number two, emailing. I'm gonna give you quantities in just a minute here, okay? Texting and emailing, number one and two. Okay, number three, Facebook Messenger. Number four, Instagram direct messaging, Instagram DM. Number five, phone calls, the old fashioned ones, okay? Number six, handwritten notes. Okay, people, I know a lot of you are watching this one, so let's go through this one by one. Forgive my wife in the background, we're in the rental property out in La Quinta for a week having fun, trying to escape quarantine. Here we go, ready? Let's talk text and emailing. Now we're talking database marketing, one and two. In my opinion, an ideal rhythm would be two emails a month and one text a month to everyone in your database with proper opt-ins, of course, right? That for me is an ideal rhythm from someone who ran a marketing company for a long time. And I'm not sharing with you something we don't do. Is that fair? Okay. Now, that means 36 touches a year-ish. It doesn't have, it could be a little more, it could be a little less, it doesn't matter exactly. What matters is that you're keeping in touch. We'll get to content in a minute, but please understand the content is not nearly as important as the frequency and consistency. Okay, let's go to three and four, ready? Three and four, social media, which are databases, right? In my opinion, if you have 500 Facebook friends, you send one Facebook Messenger message each month, every month of the year, to every one of those 500 friends. If you have, we have 5,000 Facebook friends, right? You can't do it on Facebook. They block you at 35 messages a day, okay? They do. And then you have to wait till the next day to do the next 35. So you can get, you know, do about whatever, 900-ish, 1,000-ish in the course of a month. So if you have 2,000 Facebook friends, you can only get to about 1,000 of them or so in a month but you should send out a thousand Facebook Messenger messages a month, individually, by hand, one by one, to each Facebook Messenger, uh, Facebook friend. And if you're thinking, you're a business coach and you're telling me to do that yourself, of course my answer is no, you delegate it. You get somebody else to do it. Fair enough, okay? And, and incidentally, I'm gonna put my cell number on here. If anybody wants advice off record on how to do stuff like this, where do you get resources for it? How do I do this super inexpensively? That's my cell number up there. If anybody wants some, you know, some, a little bit of private info on that kind of stuff, there are all kinds of ways to do this for you. Okay, do you realize, 
I'll get to response rates, but with Facebook, when we send out a thousand messages a month, right now we're getting on average a 1% yes rate to even a direct ask, which means we're getting that many, le uh, 10 leads a month from it. Interesting stuff. Okay. Um, I'll come back to those numbers in a sec. Instagram. You should send one Instagram direct message per month to everybody who's an Instagram follower. If, and, and there's no limit to how many messages you can send out in Instagram. We have 2,400 or whatever it is Instagram followers, right? We send 2,400 Instagram messages every month. So 12 monthly, they get 12 touches through Instagram, not just the post. Let me talk about posting. I recommend to people to post, and there are different studies on what's the right number. There's no exact right number, but we do. We do, and we recommend Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. 12 posts a week, okay? And no, they don't all have to be different like your marketers will tell you. Okay, but that warms up Facebook and Instagram, and then you send messages through Facebook Messenger and Instagram direct messaging. Calls and notes, there's no right number for how many phone conversations daily. I have some clients that do three a day with past and potential clients. I have some clients because they're doing more of the prospecting type calling that are trying to do 10 and 20 conversations a day. Okay, whatever that number is, pick a number, make it doable and hit it every day. And lastly, handwritten notes. I love three handwritten notes a day because it doesn't take much time. Let's wrap this up in a bundle. Does everybody understand if you're doing one text a month to the whole database, two emails a month, the whole database, a Facebook messenger message to at least a thousand Facebook friends, Instagram direct messaging to everybody every month, calls and notes, you're going to have a more robust business, much more robust. There's gonna be so much more interaction. You're gonna lean in when a lot of people are checking out during coronavirus era. You're gonna lean in, interesting. So now real quick, let's talk content and we'll start wrapping this one up in just a moment here, okay? Um, content, what kind of content do you wanna share? If you're gonna do all these touches with people, uh, incidentally, what if you're the type of real estate professional that's really good with people but really disorganized? What if you're the type of real estate professional that's really good at connecting, building relationships, going on appointments, doing deals, but you're hearing me talk about these six tactics of database marketing and you're overwhelmed. And you're thinking to yourself, I can't do this. This is my brain's exploding. Congratulations. When I coach people privately that are more salesy and less task, what I tell them is I now bless you and give you permission to be totally disorganized in your business. I am the only coach that believes that the most successful people in business are never truly organized. Let me qualify that so it doesn't sound too out there. As long as you're powerfully engaged in interacting with past and potential clients, right? As long as you're engaged in interacting with past and potential clients, a lot, you're gonna do a lot more business. And no, it doesn't have to be organized. For example, there's a lender who I coach, Chris Sakiki, very high volume, Franklin Home Loans out in Rancho Cucamonga, okay? Chris, is totally disorganized and kind of ADD, OCD-ish, right? Great guy. And Chris is like, I need to make a system out of this. So this is what he designed. He took an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. And at the top, he put date. So pretend today's June 26th, Friday. And then he put number one text with a bunch of empty boxes where he could fill in last names. You kind of see where this is going already. And then he put emails with a bunch of empty boxes and he could fill in last names, Facebook Messenger, and all day long, he would start putting in the last names of the people he emailed and he texted and he spoke with and he sent a note to. And his objective every day, as crazy as this sounds, was to try to get to 100 and even 150 a day. How do you do that? Well, if it was five o'clock in the afternoon and he was at 25 or 30, he would send an email to 70 or whatever. But he wanted to make sure he engaged with a certain minimum number of people every day that was way more than anything he'd ever done before. Does that make sense? So now when you do that kind of engagement, what content do you share with people? So let's do this one, ready? I'll give you a couple quick hits on this one and we'll move on. Number one, number one, stories, stories. The greatest sales professionals tell the greatest stories. Uh, I once did a coaching, um, kind of a master, co a master class with a guy named Rodney Galbraith. Rod Rodney is a public speaking coach and Rodney, among his personal private coaching clients, he includes John Maxwell and Les Brown, who are both amazing, right? Roddy says this. He says the world's greatest public speakers, 50% of their talk time is telling personal stories. The best way to teach is through testimony. 
telling personal stories connects you to people. If I tell you a story about my marriage and being a disastrous husband or, you know, building a business and why did it take so long to get over fears? If I'm sharing with you authentically stories, good, bad, and indifferent, right? It's interesting how it connects you to people. You know, the old expression, you know, uh, people want a relationship first before you can have transaction. The game of real estate and any, any service-based business is relationship. I hope you all know that loud and clear. So number one is tell stories. How do you do that? Well, you could text a video through Lion Desk. You could shoot a video and just tell a story, right? I could tell a video. Uh, I, could, I could take any content and share it as a story. Okay, quick example of a story that you could tell. I have a client who said, Dave, I'm having trouble getting some buyers off the fence to take action. They're scared because of everything going on. And I said, tell them personal stories. Let me tell you mine. I'm 20 something years old living in the Bay Area, Bay Area working for Crescent Jewelers. This is in the 1990s. Looking to buy a house on Bay Farm Island, three bedroom, two bath, 270K. And I didn't buy it at that time for a variety of reasons. Number one, my parents never owned a home and I was scared. Number two, I didn't know you could rent it and hold it and rent it out, hire a property manager. I thought the market was a little high at the time, right? I knew I wanted to move to SoCal and I thought it would be too much of a burden. What would that thing be worth today? So I Googled it. A eh, million one, a million two ish. And the mortgage would be 25 years paid down now. Look, here's the punchline. The right time to buy property is always, always, if you're thinking long term to keep it, right? Okay, what was my point? My point was you can tell stories to sell a point, if you will, or to influence. Number one, share stories. You could share a video by text. You could share a story by phone and call up a client and tell them, hey, I wanted to share with you something about historical interest rate, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, share stories. You could do it through any one of those six tactics. Number two, share statistics or facts. Okay, I'm not gonna pull it up on screen, but I have great charts that we've been posting for clients on social media or whatever that shows the average interest rate in the 80s was, you know, in the 70s was like 8.8%. In the 80s, it was like 11 point something percent. In the 90s, it was, you know, 6 point something percent. And now it's 3 point something or whatever. And yet people are like, I want to hold off and wait because it might go lower or something. I'm like, are you freaking out? You can use statistics, share statistics with people in the form of charts or graphs or call people and text it to them. You can call your whole database and go, hey, can I show you a little chart about interest rates? I know you may not be interested in buying or selling a home anytime soon, but I saw this thing and I wanted to share it with you, Susie. So if you know anybody interested in doing something or considering doing something, share this with them. It's important, right? These are ridiculously historically low rates. Don't wait five years and take chances on this stuff. So you can use number two, share statistics or facts with people. Okay. Number three, Share social or networking stories. What do I mean by that? Well, you could do social content. You could just call people up and wish them a happy Father's Day or whatever, right? Or let me give you a real life example. I have a client or a lender named Christine Perez. And Christine tells me, Dave, I got a refi client who told me that, hey, when I bought the house, do you know the realtor that helped, that helped me? And Christine's like, yeah, I know that realtor. I actually did a transaction or two with her. Christine picks up the phone and starts using social and networking content to reach out to her database and reaches out to the realtor that did their home purchase with them because she knew her a little bit and said, Carolina, it's been a long time. How are you doing? Hey, I just wanted to let you know I'm, I'm helping on a refi with some clients that you helped before. And she's like, wow, that's awesome. Why don't you reach out to them and let them know? So Carolina reached out to the clients and the clients were all happy. How about this one? They told Carolina that they appreciated her and might have something else for her. Carolina calls back Christine and says, thank you so much. And by the way, can you help me with this one or two uh, leads that I have? Christine tells me the story. And then I say, Christine, what's Carolina's last name? Or where? I don't remember. Where does she work? With this Realty One office? I know that office. I coached there for a year. Carolina Moreno, I know her. She's from Columbia and my wife's from Columbia. So now Christine picks up the phone and calls up Carolina again. Hey, did you know I, biz I coach with David Halpern and his wife? And she's like, yeah, of course, and Columbia and Bogota and all that. Does everybody understand the power of networking and connecting socially with people to keep these, these channels alive? That's number three. Number four, share news items. Share news items. There could be something bigger, for example. There's an association somewhere that's doing in LA that's doing like, a, according to a lender of mine, doing $3,500 grants for new home buyers. Well, you could call up your database or if you're a lender, you could call up your realtors and say, hey, look, did you know this thing exists? It's news items. You could share a product maybe. Let's go to number five, right? 
Uh, number five is, you know, if, if you want to interact with people, right? Number five could be a direct ask, a direct ask for business. Realtors, please write this down. And, and you know what? If you guys want scripts for direct asks, again, I'm going to put my cell number on here. It's David Halpern, right? Go ahead and message me. You're welcome to. And I'll send you about 25, 30 scripts for realtors to ask directly for business, different ones, and you can pick and choose what you like or rotate. Look, you know what the highest response rate script is that we've been using with our clients to get business? It's going to sound simple. It is. It's hi, Susan. Any interest in buying or selling a home? And then in parentheses, or investment property, smiley face, sometime in the future. Best, Stephen Lopez or whatever your name is, right? So a direct ask for a referral or a direct ask for, like if you're a lender you could, or even a realtor, you could say, interest rates are unbelievable right now. There's a feeding frenzy. Do you want me to get your information on how much we can lower your monthly mortgage payment? Or would you be interested in getting some information on anything maybe, okay? Uh, so it could be a direct ask. Okay, let's move on here, shall we? Let's move on. Um, what I want to talk to you about kind of with my last three, four minutes is the idea of increasing activity levels radically, okay? And leaning on database for that kind of thing as well is kind of my punchline for this short call. Um, Peter Drucker, when he was alive, he was considered kind of the father of modern management in the U.S. And the Claremont Business Schools up in L.A. are named after him, the Drucker School of Management, whatever. He passed away okay, a number of years ago. He used to say this. If you're taking notes, please write this down. If you're not taking notes, please write this down. Do what you do best and outsource the rest. This is in one sentence. is encapsulates what you're supposed to do as a business owner. Okay? For me, I love learning and teaching. I like people and I like talking business all day long, but I didn't say that I love generating leads, doing follow-up booking appointments, following up on past dues and payments, doing the bookkeeping, doing the marketing, doing the accounting. I didn't say that. I said I love learning and teaching, which means in the beginning, when I started my coaching business, or in the beginning, when you started your real estate business, which hats do you wear? And the answer, of course, is all of them, right? All of them. All right. Well, um, if you're wearing all of those hats, then how do you have time to be effective in any of them? And the answer, of course, is it's taking you away from your best and highest giftedness. So what do you do? And the answer is pretty simple. Over time, you delegate pieces of your business to free you up to do more and more of that which you love. Now, that which you love is almost always that which you're powerful in. So usually that works hand in hand. For example, the, the majority of realtors that I work with will say that what they're best at and what they love the most is relationship building and hanging out with people, right? Being on appointments. Okay, I get it. But what you didn't say is generating new leads and doing follow-up and booking those appointments and, you know, and uh, dealing with the escrow process and, you know, following up and setting appointments for showings and all the complexity you guys have right now, of course. And I didn't say the bookkeeping and filing taxes and doing the marketing. What you said was you like being on appointments with people. Does everybody on this call understand that the number one way for you to grow your business in the next 12 to 24 months is to spend more and more time on appointments, especially for those people that said that. Okay. So how do you do this? How do you do it? How do you get to where like my brother-in-law, the realtor who in 2013 did only six sides or transactions asked me for help. I started coaching him and some of his friends. Now he's got 10 deals in escrow currently as we speak, he's kind of staying with me this week. We're out, we're out at a, as I said in the, in, the, um, in the desert here, but what changed? What changed was little by little, he started to get help and hire people part-time, all part-timers to do pieces of his business equation, okay? Let me use a real life example from my own coaching business to teach through testimony. When I started coaching in, in 2013, and then my brother-in-law and his friends started leading me to all these realtors and lenders and this crazy thing kind of built here in the last seven years, right? Um, please know this in the beginning, it was just me doing everything. And we built it up to miracle of miracles to where it was paying my bills and overhead and all that kind of stuff. And I knew I had a sustainable business. And then I hired two people. I hired one woman part-time, actually she was overseas through Upwork, one of my favorite work websites in the world. Okay. Uh, to do administrative tasks for me. 
And then I hired another woman who I'd known professionally from before, from corporate environments, to set appointments for me. And her job was just to get me in front of four potential new clients every week. I know she's on the call right now, Rosalind Andrews, right? The business doubled in about six to seven months. Crazy? Let's keep, keep going. We are now today, today, in June of 2020, I am the only coach in my business. I have no dream or desire to build a team of coaches. I have none, right? I, I, my product is my experience. I'm just sharing with people and working together to build businesses, right? So listen to this. We, are, we built from a four-figure to a five-figure to a six-figure to a seven-figure business. I have 22 people working with me now, 22. If you think you can do it yourself and build the business to the next level of production, you're, killing your, you're kidding yourself. It takes a village. It takes a village. Now, interesting, listen to this carefully. Of those 20 other people on my team, about four-ish are full-time and all the rest are part-timers and they all do one task each. But it takes a village to build a business. Now, we didn't go from one person to 20 in one day. It was incremental, it was imperfect, it was bloody. Now, how do you know what do you need to delegate first? Simple rule of thumb if you're gonna write this down. Whenever you feel stressed or overwhelmed, it's simple, get help. Get help. Whenever you feel stressed or overwhelmed, get help. It's almost always in the form of people, sometimes in the form of technology like a lion desk, okay? But get help. I like to hire a single person for a single task only, which is why most of my people are part-timers. And the beauty of part-timers is, if they don't work out, it's much easier to part ways, and you can continue to build until you find people that have great work ethics and smarts and problem-solving skills, right? Okay? So you're going to start adding and layering people. Think about this. If you take every stage of your business, you could get somebody to generate appointments for you or use technologies to generate appointments for you. You could get somebody else to follow up with those appointments and book into your calendar. You could have somebody else do the bookkeeping. You could have somebody, you could hire people for a variety of tasks. Okay. Little by little, you want to do that. I'm not going to get into the details of that for the purpose of this particular call, but what I wanted to mention to you is the difference between a sales professional and a business owner. Let me encapsulate it. Ready? Sales professional says I do everything myself. If I want to make more money, I just got to kill myself more. Trade time for money more and more and more. Don't get me wrong. Some of them make good six figure incomes, but they've plateaued. Do you know how many coaching clients I have that are like between 50K and 250K? And they have no idea how to break through from wherever they are now. Same rough volume levels for the last five years. And the reason they're not going to break through is they don't think like the owner. The owner thinks leverage. The owner thinks, how do I sit on the seesaw and have it shoot up, right? The owner thinks, how do I get mentoring and outside influences to help me grow this thing? The owner says, how do I get people to help me take on these tasks and grow this thing? The owner says, how do I utilize marketing channels and increase radically marketing channels to create a much greater flood? Okay, let's wrap up with this expression for you here. It's a mantra I'm known for. In fact, our website is called floodthefunnel.com of all things. I love this quote or expression. The purpose of a business owner is to do two things. Number one, flood the fricking funnel, as I like to say. And flooding the funnel is like a mindset more than a marketing strategy. It's this acknowledgement that if I want to build the greatest business ever, I need tons more leads and appointments. And chaos is okay. In other words, when you do that, you know what it's like, right? You go get a bunch of deals, and now all heck's breaking loose, right? Now it's like you can't keep up with the new leads as they're coming in. Now it's like you're, you're, you're losing, you know, clients in the middle, and you're, your customer service used to be an A+. Plus. Now you're like, it's like it feels like a B-, minus, but you're making more money, people. Look. Flooding the funnel is step one of being a great business owner. It is increasing radically the kind of the leads and the appointments that are going through your channels. And you're only going to do that by much more massive, massive interaction and outreach. The second piece of the business equation is not just flood the funnel. Here's the problem with this. Ready? People I know will flood the funnel. And then the moment it gets chaotic, they take their foot off the gas pedal. You know this. They stop prospecting. They just stop right? Too many headaches, problems in escrow. I give up. I'm going to take the next few months off. And then they go back down in volume every year. It's like a, this carousel ride of up and down business. So there is more to it than flooding the funnel. You've got to also number two, embrace the chaos. And for me, embracing the chaos means that you recognize when the funnel's flooded and all heck's breaking loose. 
and you go, this is good. I, I have successfully completed level one of this game called business. I have flooded the funnel. Now I got to embrace the chaos by hiring help. In my case, part-timers to handle individual tasks, a number of them, to start to create a floor under this new volume and let me breathe and get my shoulders down so I can build from here going forward. Uh, I love doing stuff like that. Like that. And um, okay, in any event, let's wrap up with this one. I hope this was of value to you, okay? I would love it if anybody listening here would like to type in a takeaway, right, into this, into the chat box. And, you know, Raylene Brundage, I did notice a while back, you put a note in there about is there a webinar that teaches, you know, sort of the system. And the answer is, I'm going to share with you a way that you can get that system for free in just a sec, okay, which is cool. So like a, a little nice offer or something, Lion Desk had asked me, could we do something of benefit to the San Diego community here, you know, sort of on our own dime, if you know what I mean, that would really help you guys. So I'm going to kind of type that in there for you in just a minute, okay? Um, so flood the funnel and embrace the chaos would be the mantra. If you could type in any takeaways that you got into the chat box, I'll read off the takeaways here for the next minute or two. So if any one or two or three of you want to type in there something that caught your attention from this particular, you know, anything that may have grabbed your attention or created a potential change of thinking, go ahead and type it in the chat box. I'll read it out. And in the meantime, I want to share with you uh, what, uh, you know, at Lion Desk's request, what we're going to do for you here. Are you ready? If anyone on this call wants further information, let's give you the three things you can do for outreach. Uh, Steven, I don't know if you want to kind of unmute because I forget the 909 phone number if you've got it handy uh, for the text message. I guess he's, Steven's going to post this in just a second. Number one, if you would like a literally to join us on Raylene Brundage, a seminar for exactly what you're talking about, free seminar. No, we're not going to arm twist anyone to do anything. We're here to serve the board right now, right? Okay, if you guys want to get on a, you'll see this uh, number two, it's a free group mastermind, okay? Just text that number 909-303-6933 and type in the word gift. If anyone would like a free one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, and you'll notice I coach and I don't arm twist for clients. If you guys literally genuinely want to get some time to strategize and work on your business and identify some quick hits that can move it, okay? Just text, you know, type that number, text gift. It's my pleasure. Third thing is if any of you wants to interact with me on a daily basis through my private Facebook group coaching page where people literally type in their numbers every day, their contacts and their leads and all that kind of stuff. It's very cool. And I share videos to that uh, page, by the way, every morning, content videos for your business. Um, so it's basically here's free coaching and accountability for you. No kidding. Um, Again, just type that, uh, tech, you know, type that number, 909-303-6933, type in the word gift, and you can put whatever, number one, if you want a free code, blah, blah, blah. You put in one, two, or three. If you want all three, put one, two, and three. Just type in whatever you want in there, and it'll be an opportunity for us to connect and hopefully add more value to you and your business, okay? Um, really appreciate you all very much. I will tell you, it's very important that you know this. There is nothing more powerful. I don't care, you know, look, you're not here to, to go sign up for everything or whatever. What I want to tell you is it's very important that you, in my opinion, if you really genuinely want to break through in your business, accept that growth is bloody. Growth is bloody. Breaking through involves doing things you haven't done before. Breaking through involves doing quantities you haven't done before. It's really quite easy it's easy to physically do. Psychologically, it takes, you know, a kind of a change of mindset, which is why it's really important to walk the journey with people, I think. Okay. So in order to break through, you're going to have to start doing things. And let, let me give you an example of this and, we're, and uh, we'll pass this on to Stephen for some Lion Desk work with you. And you'll love some of their new tools, by the way, on Lion Desk. So pay particular attention. Um, look, the reality of this is you want to step up your outside influences so you start thinking differently. You want to start stepping up, getting a little bit of help, even super inexpensive ways, which we can share with you on those, um, on those different products or whatever, those different seminars or whatever, how to do it so it doesn't really dent you, right? There are ways to do it creatively, and you really do want to step up your marketing. You will, when you market more, get new, I call them lovers, new likers. You'll also get some more opt-outs and an occasional negative Nelly. And 
please, please, one last thing to write down. If you're overly concerned what other people think about you, you cannot build a great business. So if your concern is perfect perfectionism and looking good in front of people and looking perfect and having it all put together, it is really, really impossible to scale. Okay. I tell people it's kind of fun for me to build a business because I've grown some thicker skin about this over the years. And um, I'm hoping that maybe on this short call this morning, we help you at least sort of strengthen your armor, if you will, so that you can go out and build a more robust business yourself. So folks, thank you so much for your time. I really hope it was beneficial. Look forward to getting to know some of you. And Stephen, I'm gonna pass it over to you. And please, please folks, pay, pay particular attention because there's some new tools in there and especially some of the video uploading and the direct mail that is really pretty nifty. So thank you again, folks. Awesome. Thank you so much, David. Uh, thank you for sharing your insight and your experience. Definitely uh, some good nuggets there. Um, so hello, everybody. My name is Steven. Actually, let me go ahead and move on here. Uh, my name is Steven. I am the LionDesk product specialist, and I'll be the one guiding you through LionDesk today. Uh, so just to give you, give you a little bit of what we're going to cover, uh, we're going to show you how to activate your LionDesk account. We're going to show you how to navigate the platform. We are gonna have some time for Q&A, so if you do have any questions, go ahead and submit them in the chat box. You should see it at like the bottom of your screen. And then we're just gonna end up showing you the different training resources that are available to you, right? We've had this session for an hour, an hour and a half, so there's a lot of great things to take away, but there's so much more that LionDesk can offer. Uh, so I wanna make sure that you guys are knowledgeable about what's there, what resources you can take advantage of, and how to really use LionDesk effectively. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive in. First thing I want to show you all is how to access your free LionDesk account. Uh, so as long as you're part of CRMLS, right, as long as you're paying your member benefit dues, you'll have access to LionDesk for free. Uh, so go ahead and log into your CRMLS account. Once you log in, just go ahead and look at the very top of <coughs> your navigation bar and you're going to see links. Uh, once you click on links, you are going to see all of the tools that CRMLS has uh, offered to you all, right, as a member. So go ahead and just scroll down the list and you're going to find LionDesk uh, right below. All you have to do is click on that button and it's going to activate your free account for you. Right, so it's super simple. Again, just log into your CRMLS, click link, and then search for LionDesk. Um, awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and actually dive into the platform. Uh, one of the ma major things, one of the major updates that we've done is we've released a new LionDesk version. So if you've used LionDesk before, you're probably going to notice that LionDesk has launched this new version. If it's your first time using it, awesome. You're going to see all the great things that, are, that has uh, been released with LionDesk. We have so many great new features to show you all. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive in. Give me a second and let me uh, jump into LionDesk. Perfect. Okay, y'all, so here I am logged into my LionDesk account. Uh, here we are in the homepage, and there's gonna be a lot of information, a lot of valuable information in my homepage. So we're gonna start here. Uh, you're gonna see that your homepage is separated into four different sections, right, four different sections. We have our vitals, we have our contact filters, our tasks, and our recent activity. Uh, so I'm going to show you around the platform. Again, there's a lot of great information just within this first page. Uh, first off, we have our vitals. Uh, so this is going to tell you what's going on with your platform, right? There's a lot of emails that you can send out, text messages. There's a lot of uh, things that you can do within LionDesk. So your vitals are just going to keep track of what you're doing, how you're using it, um, and if you're getting responses. Uh, so if you're looking at my screen right now, what am I tracking with my vitals? I'm tracking how many new contacts have entered my database, how many text messages have I sent, how many outbound emails have I sent, and so on. Uh, so you can customize your vitals, you can track the information that's important for you, right? Knowing what you're doing with your system can really help you plan out what you need to do in order to, to advance, right, to grow. Uh, so quickly, quickly, just clicking on the customize button, you are going to see the different ways that you can customize your vitals. We have so many things that you can track. Go ahead and select what's important to you. All you have to do is click on the box uh, next to the name to select or to deselect. Right, and once you're done, go ahead and click on apply. Uh, so again, the vitals track what's going in and out of your platform, and it gives you an idea of how effectively are you using LionDesk. Uh, so right now, we're also just tracking these 30 days. You can track other time frames, right? Like the past 24 hours, the past seven days, or the past 30 days. Uh, just select from this drop-down menu, right? So right there, the vitals, awesome information. Let's go ahead and move on. Right below the vitals, I'm going to see tasks. 
So this is my to-do list, right? So every time I wake up in the morning, I want to log into LionDesk. I want to check out my task page and see what I, what I need to complete for that day, right? Do I have an open house coming up? Do I have a meeting? What calls do I need to make? Uh, you'll see them all listed there. Um, it's super simple to create a task. You are going to see that blue button, right? Create task. Go ahead and click on it, and it's going to slide in on the right-hand side. Uh, so from here, I just need to fill out the, the fields, like what do I have coming up? Do I have a meeting? Do I need to make some calls? Uh, what do I need to do? Right, so just fill out the description, the notes, uh, what reminder would you like in email, call, or text? And then finally, the due date, right? So again, once you create those tasks, you're gonna see them listed in your homepage. So all you have to do is log in and start completing your tasks. Uh, another, another quick note is that LionDesk does send you an email every morning showing you what you have to complete for that day, right? So make sure you, that you have your tasks set up, make sure that you're kind of on top of that, right? Making sure that your day-to-day your -day is listed in LionDesk so you know what you need to complete. Moving on, we have recent activity. Uh, so what's the great thing about LionDesk is that you can send out emails, you can send out text messages, you can make calls, you can create these direct mail uh, pieces, right? All of these ways that you can communicate with your contacts. Uh, and what's really great is that uh, as long as you do it through LionDesk, we're going to capture all of that information, all of those emails, all of those text messages. Uh, we're going to have a record of it so you know what you've sent to your clients, right? You can just pull into any contact record, see those emails, see those text messages, and just, you know, pick off from where you last left off. So as we look below, we are going to see this extensive feed of everything that I've sent out, all of these emails, these text messages, um, and so on, right? So just scroll below to view. Now, this is the one I really, really want to show you on, really want to focus on, because it really aligns to what David has uh, uh, spoken to uh, throughout this session. So here we have is contact filters, right? So David talked about casting a white net, white net right? reaching out to your database, to your entire database, and doing it consistently, right? Doing a, uh, reaching out like two to three times a month, uh, and so on, really depending on the clients that you have. And so contact filters are going to help you achieve that. So looking at my contact filters, you're gonna see that I have three tiles up there, my buyer leads, my hot leads, and my prospecting leads, right? So I'm casting these white nets, but I'm actually taking it a little step further. Not only am I casting a white net, I'm really being strategic with who I reach out to. So I have a group of my buyers, a group of my hot leads, and a group of my, uh, my prospecting leads. And I'm gonna make sure that I cast a white net to that entire group and making sure that I do it consistently. And so LionDesk is going to not only track how many leads you have in that group, but it's gonna let you know if you have contacts that are slipping away, right? The whole goal is to have that consistent communication. And if you forget to do so, don't worry because LionDesk has you covered. So here we are, let's take my buyer leads for example. I have 24 contacts in this group. If I look below, it's gonna let me know the contacts that are slipping away, right? These are the people that I want to reach out to. These are the people that I need to reach out to. Uh, so I have a time frame set, a reminder set every 30 days. So if I don't, if I forget to reach out to them, send me this notification. So this is letting me know that uh, I have 16 contacts in this group that I haven't reached out to in the past 30 days. Um, and all I have to do is just click on this section here to send them an email, to send them a text message, right? So let's go ahead and click on that button. And it's going to preload that list of contacts for me, right? So as I look here, uh, I have these 16 contacts. As I scroll below, I'm going to see all of these contacts that are buyers. And you notice because they're, they're, they're tagged as buyers, right? And all I have to do is email all of these contacts and then I'm done, right? I've reached out to all my buyers and I'm going to be consistent with it. So let me go ahead and show you all how to do a bulk email, right? Casting that white net. I'm going to expand my list of contacts so that way I can email all 16. I'm going to select all by clicking on this box above, right? And you'll see that it selects all. And then as I scroll above, I'm going to see these icons to email and to text. Uh, so let's go ahead and do a bulk email just to show you all how you can really build out your emails uh, for your buyers. So I'm going to go ahead and click on email. And it's going to open up to a template with all of my emails uh, in the two section. So let's give it a second. Oh, here we go. Uh, so here we have it, two section all of these emails plus 10 more. And as I scroll below, all I have to do is type out the subject line, body of the email, and click send. 
Uh, but before we do, I want to show you a little bit around our emails and how you can really build them up to connect with your contacts. Uh, so this is kind of a point that I want to drill in. Uh, so again, right, you want to cast that wide net, but you want to be strategic. As you saw, I had a group for my buyers. I had a group for my hot leads. I had a group for my prospecting. Uh, I want to make sure that when I send out an email or when I send out a text message, that I'm sending them information that's valuable to them, right? So if I just send a bulk email to everyone in my system without really thinking about who they are or what their needs are, they might not even open up that email, right? If I send out an email that's really specific to sellers, a buyer's gonna look at that email and not even gonna click on it. So we wanna make sure that we create these groups and send them emails that provide value, that are interesting to them, that it's gonna make them click on the email and actually read that email. Uh, so making sure that you send um, custom information that markets to their wants and needs. Uh, so one thing that you're going to notice with Lioness is that we do provide you with some templates that you can work off of. Uh, so if you scroll to the top, you are going to see this button, choose a template. Uh, so as a new user, as part of CRMLS, we do provide you with a little over 100 email templates that you can select from. All you have to do is click on choose a template, and you'll see those folders slided on the right-hand side. Uh, quick note, I definitely use this for a lot of training, so you're going to see that I have so many folders that I worked off of. Uh, but as a new user, you're probably going to see five or six to begin with. Right, you're gonna see a folder for your new leads, for your buyers, for your sellers, for your close clients and more. Uh, so just scroll below and look for those folders and look at the templates that are available for you to use. Uh, so let me look for one of the folders that you, all, that you all should have access to. Give me a second. Here we go, Lion Desk General Buyer Trip. This is one that everyone should have access to. As I open it, I'm gonna see the different emails that are available in, the, uh, in this uh, folder, right? So this has about 11 emails. You can always preview them. Just click on this eye icon to see what's in there. So reading it, this looks great. Let me go ahead and select it. All you have to do is just click on the email and it's going to preload that template for you. So I'm going to exit out of this slide and screen and boom, right? Subject line's done. Body of the email is done. You are going to see these codes like first name, and email signature, that's gonna auto-populate on its own. Like this is pretty much ready to go. All you have to do is scroll to the bottom and click send. But before we do, I definitely recommend, you know, spicing it up a bit, adding your own little flair to it, adding images, videos, emojis. And Lion Dust allows you to do all of that. So if you're looking at the toolbar, you know, right above the template, you are gonna see all the different things that you can do with your email templates. And I'm gonna highlight a specific view. Uh, so first off, I do want to show you all that Lion Desk has uh, built in an emoji library for you all to use. So you're going to see this little smiley face, this little icon here. All you have to do is click on it, and it shows you all the emojis that you can use uh, within Lion Desk. Uh, what's really great is that this is our Lion Desk library of emojis. Uh, if you have your own set of emojis, go ahead and use those. All you have to do is copy and paste. So let me go ahead and add a few. Let's use this little lion, right, and add in a, uh, a couple more. Right, boom. Uh, so I have a few emojis in there. Other things that you can do is you can add in images. Uh, and if you're familiar with our older platform, that was a bit of a process, but we made it a lot cleaner. We made it a lot easier in the new version. So all you have to do is click on this image icon next to the emoji, gives you this pop-up, just drag and drop, right? From your computer, go ahead and grab an image and drag it into this section here, or click on the cloud icon and it opens up to your files. Uh, so let's go ahead and select an image. Boom, we have this line here. Go ahead and open. And as I scroll below, I'll see that it captured my image. Let me go a little bit. There we go. Uh, so I see my preview of my image. I can customize the width and the height. Better yet, I can make this image a hyperlink. Right? I know a lot of our users like to uh, redirect our, uh, their contacts to their social medias, to their websites, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever it may be. Uh, so you can create these hyper images, right? So I have my image here. And right above, you're gonna see image hyperlinks. So if you did wanna redirect them to, you know, your social media, your website, go ahead and copy that, copy and paste that link and add it right there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and type out a quick link, HTTPS, uh, www.lionesk.com and click on upload. Right, boom, let me drop this down a bit. There we go. And as I hover over it, you're gonna see that it's gonna redirect me to lionesk.com. Right, so let's open up this link. 
And oh, okay, I missed a W there, but let's go ahead and fix that, right? Uh, boom. There's a triple W. Click on upload. And done. Well, let's do that one. And done. Right, so now this is going to take me to liondesk.com. Right, I fixed my little error there. Beautiful. Uh, there's a few other things that you can do here in your email templates. And the biggest thing actually really is uh, videos. So you're going to see insert line desk video. Uh, something that we've noticed, especially, you know, during this time where everyone's staying at home, is that we've seen an uptick in people opening up their emails. And we've seen an uptick in people using video emails, right? Everyone's at home. Everyone has that time to open up their emails and to watch a quick video. So definitely recommend utilizing that video email feature. Uh, better yet, LionDesk has increased the, uh, the amount of, of the file size of the video that you could use. Right? Before, you can only use a two to three minute video. Now you can do five minutes, even all the way up to 20 minute long videos. Uh, so go ahead, start recording. If you already have videos, go ahead and upload those into LionDesk. If you are new to videos, go ahead and start recording. Right? Uh, I used to not do webinars. I used to like be very afraid of doing videos. I used to be afraid of hearing my own voice. Right? you'll get over that. As soon as you start doing it, you'll get comfortable with it. And I definitely recommend doing so, especially now. Uh, so if you do have a video, you are going to see your videos in the video library. All you have to do is select. So I have a few here. Let me just go ahead and click on this first one. I'm going to click on select. And so we're going to see this code up here, right? I'm going to point out that although you see the code, your users are going to see that thumbnail. So just super quickly going back to the videos, you are gonna see, the users are gonna see, not your, the users, the contacts, your contacts are going to see this thumbnail. All they have to do is click on that play button to watch that video, right? So super simple, super easy to really build out these templates and make them your own. And I definitely recommend doing so, right? It adds your own little flair to it, makes it a little bit more personal, especially if you use our videos. So now all you have to do is scroll below and click send. Uh, but uh, let me show you actually where you can go to upload those videos and to create those videos. So going back to our main menu, so you'll notice our main menu here on the left, you're going to see all the different pages you can jump into, and you're going to see videos. So let's go ahead and jump into videos. Uh, once you click on videos, you are going to see your library. You'll notice I have quite a few videos here. Uh, LionDesk does let you upload or record. So Right. If you've done videos before, no worries, we got you covered. If you're brand new to videos, don't worry, we got you covered. Uh, so here you go. You can upload any videos that you have. Just click on this button and you can uh, upload an email video or a text video. Uh, if you want to record straight from your computer, go ahead and click on record video. You can record video emails up to five minutes long. You can uh, record text messages that are up to 20 seconds long. Uh, and so text messages, definitely quick and short. So as you're walking to, um, to your listing, actually, I didn't mention this, download our mobile app. Download the LionDesk mobile app because you can record videos from your phone. So as I was saying, as you're walking to your listing, you want to send out a, a message to your database, take out your phone, start recording a video of you in that listing very quickly, just 20 minutes. Hey, join me, check out this new listing, show like the most beautiful part of the listing, right? And then you go ahead, go ahead and send that to your contacts. Super effective, super great. They can just open up their phone, click on play, and look at that video. Uh, so go ahead and take advantage of our recording uh, platform. You can do it from the desktop version. You can do it from the mobile app, right? We give you all of these different ways that you can record or upload a video. All right, before we open up to the q and I definitely want to show you a one feature that we released out uh, a few weeks ago that we've seen a lot of great feedback for. Our users love it, and I'm sure that you will too. And that's going to be our direct mail pieces. Um, if you use our old platform, you'll notice that we did have direct mail. You're going to see that this light years ahead. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into direct mail. I'm going to open up the main menu here on the left hand side and click on add portal. Uh, once I click on add portal, I'm going to see these three tiles here, but let's go ahead and look at the third one direct mail. Uh, so from here, you can download free and professionally designed brochures, postcards and more. All you have to do is click on get started and you're going to see all the different templates that we have, right? We have quite a bit. You'll see brochures, door hangers, flyers, infographics, newsletters, open house, postcards, self-promotional brochures, social media, team listing flyers. That was a bit, okay, yeah. Uh, so you'll have all of these templates that you can select from. Go ahead and click on any of them, and you're going to see the design, 
right? The design is already done for you. All you have to do is just click and add in your own images, add in your own text. Uh, so let me quickly show you all how to, how to go through that experience. Uh, so let's select, let's select postcards. I'm selecting postcards, so I'm gonna click on get template. And uh, there's a few different designs that you can pick from, right? So as it opens up, I see my charm series, sharp series, retro series. So just look at the templates and look at the one that, you know, uh, that really speaks to you. Uh, so let's go ahead and click on this one. This one looks great, modern series. Once you click on it, you wanna click on uh, get started. It does give you different sizes, so four by six or, uh, or a little bit larger. Let's go ahead and do get started four by six. And from here, this is the editor. This is where you'll go to customize it, right? So we have these uh, stock photo images of just a random house, uh, but you can add in your own, right? All you have to do is just hover over that image, click, and uh, it opens up, you can upload any images from your computer, upload any images from the MLS, right? So from here, go ahead and just click. Let me select an image, just so we all can see an example. Let's go ahead and use that line again, right? So here we have the line, just move it, that way you can place it where you want it to go and click on accept photos. Right, boom, using my own images. Granted, you definitely wanna use a real estate listing image. Uh, but other than updating the photo, go ahead and update the verbiage if you wanted to, right? So this price, all you have to do is just click and start typing in. There is a front and back. So go ahead, you'll see here on the left-hand side, you can jump in from the front and the back. Go ahead and modify the images, modify the text. And once you're ready, once you've filled out your postcard, go ahead and click on free download. Once you click on that, you'll see the different options that you have. So if you have a printer at your home or in the office, go ahead and click on PDF. You can print those postcards there. You can send this to a professional printing company. Go ahead and do the PDF with crop mark if you wanna go that route. Um, or if you wanna just post it in your social media and your websites or in your emails, go ahead and do so. Just click on this PNG uh, button to download. All right, so these are free. These are professionally designed. All you have to do is just quickly customize them using your own images. And then you can use your um, office printer. You can use a, a professional company or just post them in your social media. Um, if you don't wanna go to a professional printing company, no worries, you can do it from here actually. Uh, so right below you are gonna see print and ship. Uh, so it's gonna show you your final copy of that uh, postcard. So I'll give you a second to ooh, print and ship. Perfect, here's the final proof. Just gotta accept it, looks good. Click on next. And from here, just type in your shipping address, how many of these postcards do you want, and they're gonna send them directly to your doorstep. Right, so you can do that with postcards, with brochures, with your listing flyers, and all the other templates that we showed you all in line desk. So let me actually jump back in there so you can see the different templates that you have access to. Again, brochures, door hangers, flyers, infographics, newsletters, and more. Uh, so definitely take advantage of our direct mail pieces. These are free. You can download them or you can get them shipped uh, and send them to your doorstep. But again, if you get them shipped, it does come at a cost. Uh, awesome. I do want to open it up to q and I know we have a few minutes left, so I want to make sure that you guys have all of the information. Uh, so I think I saw some questions coming in. Let me go ahead and pull those up. All right, just one question that we got really, uh, how do I get the link to register and create my own LionDesk account? Good question. Uh, that's actually gonna be done from your MLS, from CRMLS. So go ahead and log into your CRMLS account. Let me pull up that uh, slide again. Give me one second. Perfect. Again, log into your CRMLS account, um, use your login information, user ID, password. And once you do, uh, once you're logged in at the very top, you're all gonna see that navigation bar, right? Your home search, my matrix, right here above. And you wanna click on links. Once you click on links, you're gonna see uh, a list of all of the resources that are available to you as a CRMLS member. Just keep scrolling until you see LionDesk. And then click on LionDesk. You don't need to do anything else. Once you click on LionDesk, it's just gonna activate your free account. Super simple, super easy. Go ahead and log into your CRMLS account. 
I think that was the only question that I saw. I did want to share with you all the different resources that are available to you, right? So we showed you very, very briefly that you can email, you can text, you can use these direct mail pieces, and you can track your contacts to make sure that you have consistent communication. But there's so much more that you can do with LionDesk. Uh, so where can you go to get help? We do have a training page. Go ahead and just type in liondesk.com forward slash training. Um, if you're in our LionDesk website, you're just gonna see in the member area, go ahead and click on member area and click on training. Again, super simple, liondesk.com forward slash training. So what do we have available for you all, right? This was a very brief intro into LionDesk. If you really, really wanna dive into it, I definitely recommend our getting started with LionDesk webinar series. Uh, we're gonna take you from the very basics, right? How to upload your contacts, how to set up your organization, uh, to the very more advanced features on how to set up your drip campaigns, your transactions and transaction plans. Uh, so definitely sign up for getting started with LionDesk webinar series. Um, aside from this webinar series, which by the way, we host a few times throughout the week. So go ahead and pick a time slot that works best for you. Aside from the webinar series, we do have our live Q&A session. So every Thursday, 10 a.m., come in. You can ask any questions regarding LionDesk and I'll be there to show you all around. Uh, these are all live webinars, which are really great because you can, you know, be there active and ask your questions and you'll have someone there to respond back. Uh, but if you want to just dive in, watch a few videos and get started, we do have self-paced trainings. Uh, so we have this getting started series. It's essentially the session one, session two, and session three, but these have already been recorded. Uh, so you can go ahead and click on the getting started series to watch all of them on demand. We have Path to Success, which is a really great online LionDesk course that breaks it down into bite-sized pieces. And not only that, it actually prompts you to complete certain tasks in your account. So as you're learning about LionDesk, you're actually also taking the time to set up your account. Uh, so definitely recommend, go ahead and click on it and sign up. Uh, we have this Fast Start Guide. So these are just uh, six one-minute videos where you can really get started with LionDesk, right? So how to upload your contacts, how to send out a bulk email, how to send out a bulk text. And then we have our video library where you can see all the videos that we have about LionDesk. So just read the topic. If that's something that interests you, go ahead and click on play. There's a few other things that I wanna show you around. So uh, as I scroll below, uh, one of the things I do wanna show you is our concierge account setup service. Uh, so we've heard it from our users. Hey, it would be really great if someone can actually set this up for me. The thing with LionDesk is like, you wanna take an hour or two, maybe even more, it really depends on your, on your setup. Um, to set up your account, right? The whole goal of LionDesk is um, to, that you spend less time in the system and actually spend more time building your business, talking to more people, networking, or even just spending time with your family. Uh, so if you don't wanna you know, spend that ex the, the one, two, three hours to set up your account, go ahead and get the concierge account set up service and a LionDesk uh, rep will do it for you. Uh, so just quickly click on that link. What do you get in this concierge service? As I scroll below, We'll upload your contacts for you. We'll set up custom uh, campaigns. Uh, we'll set up your integrations and more. Uh, so again, if you want someone to do that work for you, go ahead and click on concierge service. Aside from that, we're still here and available to help out. So go ahead, give us a call, send us an email, come into the live chats. We're available Monday to Friday from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You're gonna see all of our contact information right here below. So again, give us a call, send us an email, or come in through live chat. All of this information is available in our training page. So again, go ahead and look it up, liondesk.com forward slash training. Once you do bookmark it, you'll definitely want to come back here, uh, you know, pretty often. Awesome. All right, y'all, I'm just going to quick check, uh, quickly check our questions again just to see if any new uh, questions came in. Uh, does, does, does the recipient of a mass email blast see my email address as the senders or is it LionDesk? Good question, uh, Sharon and Bob. Uh, it's actually going to be uh, your, uh, your email that's going to be attached to the email. So that was a little confusing. Let me go back into LionDesk. The email that you have in your profile, that's the email that we're sending it from. So if I go into my profile here in the upper right corner, select profile. Uh, this email here, and this is probably if you use your CRMLS login, it's your CRMLS email that you have linked. It's going to be this email here. Uh, so we don't create a line desk specific email for you. We just use the email into, that's uh, associated to your account. All right, so we see that listed here. Uh, 
so if I have been using the old version with the information transferred to the new, should I start using the new version from now on? Uh, so yes, yes and yes. Uh, so we're going to transfer in your information. Your contacts are going to transfer over. Your drip campaigns are going to transfer over. Uh, transactions, your deals, you definitely want to start uploading those into the new platform. Those are the only things that won't transfer, but go ahead and start uploading them now. I recommend to start using the new platform. As you notice, we kind of walked through the system and I highlighted, highlighted some new features. These new features, right, like the drag and drop images, the recording for five minutes, uh, 20 minutes long, uh, this direct mail free templates that you have access to, those are not available in the older version and they never will be. And as we continue to build out this platform and adding these uh, more amazing features, they're exclusively gonna be in the new platform. So I highly, highly recommend start using this new one. Um, you're gonna see amazing things come in, come in. We have amazing things coming up in the roadmap. So you wanna make sure to start using the new platform. And uh, finally, uh, NSDCAR Paragon subscriber, I don't go directly to CRMLS with that same dashboard. Uh, that's a good question. Um, I, let, me, let me actually open that up to NSD, NSDCAR, or let me see who's still in this call. You wanna make sure that you guys have access to it. I'm pretty positive you might still have access to the CMLS login, but give me a quick second. Uh, Nita, let me connect you with um, one of your representatives from the association. Uh, I'm assuming that since you do have access to NSDs, NSDCAR, that you will also have access to CRMLS, uh, and it should be a pretty similar experience, but let me reach out for you, um, and I'll connect you that way you, um, you can figure out how to access that free account. Um, is Lyndas close to offering recurring tasks? And yes, Jody, yes, we are. Uh, we're actually testing that in the beta phase right now. We're really, really close to um, releasing out that feature. Uh, what's really great is you can actually get notified within Lyndas of when this new feature is gonna come out. So if you look at my screen and I look right next to my name, I'm gonna see this little bell icon. This is gonna let me know when the new features are getting released and recurring tasks is probably gonna be the next one that's coming up. So definitely keep an eye out. It's coming very, very soon. Go ahead and click on the bell icon and you're gonna see all the different updates that we've done with the system. Um, every new update, you're gonna see that little red, uh, little red mark telling you, hey, there's a new update, check it out. And you're probably gonna see recurring tasks coming in soon. So definitely, definitely check it out. It's gonna be here soon, probably a lot sooner than, than we think. Awesome, I don't see any other questions to, to the chat box. I'll hang out for like a minute or two, uh, but please, please let me know if you have any questions. Um, again, go ahead and check out the training page. There's definitely a lot of great resources, liondesk.com forward slash training. Uh, that way you can really learn what Liondesk has to offer. Um, so again, sign up for your free member benefit account. And again, Anita, I'll reach out to you. I'll connect you with uh, a rep from NSD, NSDCAR. And we can make sure that you have your account set up. Awesome. I'm just going to leave up this uh, PowerPoint to show the David Halpern free gift. So just in case you miss it in the beginning, don't worry. You have one more shot to text in the free gift. Oh, no. there we go. <laughs> Give me one second. Not exactly what I expected to do, but... Uh... There we go. Again, text GIFT to 909-303-6933 and you'll be able to select uh, one or more than one of these options. So definitely take advantage of the free gift that's being offered. I think I saw a question coming in. Let's go ahead and jump into that. Oh, these are just thank you. Oh no, thank you all for joining us. Thank you all for attending and listening. Uh, it's always fun to show you all around Lion Desk. Awesome, I don't see any other questions coming in, so let's go ahead and officially end the session now. David, is there any last uh, remarks you wanna leave off? All right, I think we're good. All right, y'all, thank you all so much for joining us today. Again, make sure you get that gift. Make sure to check out our training.